Jeff and Barbara, who's not in the room right now. Jack Kligerman and Barbara are working on a program or are producing a program that will happen in this room on October 16th. It's Twain by the Tale, readings from Mark Twain. So the entire evening will be readings from works of Mark Twain by different members of the community. And it will be in this room on the 16th from 6.30 till 8 in the evening. So if you enjoy this sort of literary evening, please join us on the 16th of October. All right, now, without benefit of a microphone, we're very honored this evening that we have such a wonderful, diverse roster of readers. And we're extremely honored that we have the president of Montana State University with us this evening, Dr. Wadev Cruzado, who's going to read to us from the House of the Spirits by Isabel Andy. genre that conflates the possible with the improbable, all in one single work. At the beginning when I first read this book, I despised it. I did not like it, particularly the first half of it. Because it looks like and it reads like an imitation of that big master, which is Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who then went on to win a Nobel Prize for 100 years of solitude. Cien años de solitude. But the book is more than that. Certainly the first half, it's about magical realism, the story of a family in Latin America, but then the half, the second half, it takes off. And it becomes something else. And it's a political documentary. And it's the story about Salvador Allende, the first Marxist president to be elected in a Latin American country. So, I'll read you several passages, and you'll see the difference, and you'll see the change. It opens in true Gabriel Garcia Marquez talking about powerful women of extraordinary talents. It opens, the girl's strange beauty had a disturbing quality that even she could not help noticing. For this child of her seems to have been made of a different material from the rest of the human race. Even before she was born, Nivea had known she was not of this world because she had already seen her in dreams. This was why she had not been surprised when the midwife screamed as the child emerged. At birth, Rosa was white and smooth without a wrinkle, like a porcelain doll, with green hair and yellow eyes, the most beautiful creature to be born on earth since the days of original sin, as the midwife put it, making the sign of the cross. Her sister, Clara, is also a very strange girl which had a different set of talents. Clara's strangeness was simply an attribute of their youngest daughter, like Louise Lim or Rosa's beauty. The child's mental powers bothered no one and produced no great disorder. They almost always surfaced in matters of minor importance and within the strict confines of their home. It was true there had been times, just as they were about to sit down to dinner, and everyone was in the large dining room, seated according to dignity and position, when the salt cellar would suddenly begin to shake and move among the plates and goblets without any visible source of energy or sign or illusionist trick. Nivia would pull Clara's braids, and that would be enough to wake her daughter from her mad distraction and return the salt cellar to but of course, <coughs> this was not why the book was banned. <laughs> In 
my wild dreams, I wanted for it to be prohibited because I thought that he was imitating another author, oh, right? It was because of the sexual depictions, but also because of the political undertones. So, Clara and Rosa are belong to the same family of a very conservative senator, Senator Twitter. And after Allende is elected, then something happens. The idea of eliminating the new president, however, was not yet on anybody's mind, for his enemies were sure they would put an end to him through the same legal channels that had carried him to triumph. There he met with other politicians, a group of military men and gringos sent by their intelligence service to map a strategy for bringing down the new government. Economic destabilization, as they called their sabotage. The plans are successful. And the night of the vi 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 victory, the senator celebrates. In the big house on the corner, <coughs> Senator Trueba opened a bottle of friend champagne to celebrate the overthrow of the regime that he had fought against so ferociously, never suspecting that at that very moment, his son Jaime's testicles were being burned with an important secret. And now, a different type of magical realism. When the curfew was lifted for a few hours to enable people to go out and buy food, Blanco was amazed to see the stores filled with the products that during the preceding three years had been so scarce and that now appeared in the shop windows as if by magic. The newspaper said that the beggars in the street, a sign that had not been seen in years, had been sent by international communism to, dis to discredit the, mil the military junta and undermine the return to order and progress. Cement walls were elected to hide the most unsightly shanty towns from the eyes of tourists and others who preferred not to see them. In a single night, as if by magic, beautifully pruned gardens and flower beds appeared on the avenues. They had been planted by the unemployed to create the illusion of peaceful spring. White paint was used to erase the murals of doves and to, to remove all political posters from the site. Any attempt to write political messages in public was punished with a burst of machine gun fire on the spot. The clean, orderly, silent streets were reopened to commerce. Soon, the beggar children disappeared and Alba noticed that the stray dogs and piles of garbage were gone too. The black market came to an end at the very moment when the presidential palace was bombed, because speculators were threatened with martial law and execution by firing squad. Items whose very name was unheard of began to be sold in stores, along with things that only the rich had previously been able to buy as contracts. The city had never looked more beautiful. The upper middle class had never been so happy. They could buy as much whiskey as they wanted and automobiles on credit. And the book <coughs> finishes with one of those powerful women summarizing it in this way. At times I feel as if I had lived all of this before and that I have already written these very words. But I know it was not I. It was another woman who kept her notebook so that one day I could use them. I write, she wrote, that memory is fragile and the space of a single life is brief, passing so quickly that we never get a chance to see the relationship between events. We cannot gauge the consequences of our acts. And we believe in the fiction of past, present, and future. But it may also be true that everything happens simultaneously. And if you indulge with me, I would like to 
read that same span, that same <coughs> message in Spanish. En algunos momentos tengo la sensación de que esto ya lo he vivido y que he escrito estas mismas palabras, pero comprendo que no soy yo, sino otra mujer que anotó en sus cuadernos para que yo me sirviera de ellos. Escribo, ella escribió, que la memoria es frágil y el transcurso de una vida es muy breve y sucede todo tan deprisa que no alcanzamos a ver la relación entre los acontecimientos. No podemos medir la consecuencia de los actos. Creemos en la ficción del tiempo, en el presente, el pasado y el futuro, pero puede ser también que todo ocurre.